So Momota or Axelson? I'm Japanese, gotta go Momota. <laughs> cool. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm CK and today we have a very special video. Please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me and the channel grow, which enables me to make better videos and more informative videos for you guys. So as badminton fans, we always want to get closer to the action and what better way to know the players on the other side by speaking to their stringers at the tournaments. Badminton stringers on the pro circuit are similar to Formula 1 team's pit crew. So without the pit crew, the drivers wouldn't be able to drive to the best of their abilities. And this is the same for the pro players on the world circuit. So today I have a special guest in the name of Alan Kakinami. Alan, who is a world-class pro stringer, who was part of the Yonex team, who have strung in events all across the world, from the US Open to regional events like the Pan American Games, uh, to the World Championships, and ultimately at the Olympics as well. So he's someone who's seen it all, or strung it all in this situation. So personally, I have met Alan at the 2011 World Championships, which was held in London, but it wasn't until um, he dropped a comment in one of my videos, which I will link in the description below, that got us talking and hence why this video happened today. So as this video is slightly longer than usual, I have listed the topics of discussion down in the description box below with their timeline on the video so we can just click on them and go directly to that section. So use them in the description box below. So thank you so much AK for agreeing to this interview and this impromptu chat to allow us to dig deeper into the experience and wisdom that he's gained from springing at these huge events for the pro players which we'll idolize and let's get into it. Um, so, konnichiwa Kakinami Sensei. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to my request for an interview. So tell us, uh, please tell us, what have you been up to lately? So like, where, where are you? Um, and where have you been doing? I'm living in Chigasaki, Japan. I've uh, been here for almost three years now. Uh, I'm working in a pro shop called Sports House Career. Bunch of old Japanese men. <laughs> <laughs> so did the, you move from the States to, can uh, to yeah. Japan? Yeah, my family wanted to move back, my wife and give my daughter a Japanese education. Cool. It's just too expensive in California. So um, so you, you work at the shop. Um, does it specialize in badminton or is it tennis or is it? All racket sports. All racket sports. So actually we have soft tennis in Japan. Soft. So what's the difference between soft tennis and normal tennis? Uh, the tensions are a little bit lower. The rackets are different. Uh, technology's different, so it's okay. different than stringing like a regular tennis racket. So I get conversations between stringing tennis rackets and stringing badminton rackets. Personally, I think stringing badminton rackets is slightly harder because the strings are thinner and it's fiddly, it's softer, smaller holes, smaller grommets. Do you feel the same way? Do, which one do you find easier to string? Uh, yeah, tennis rackets are definitely a lot easier. You're going like 16 by 18, 16 by 19. Batman, you're 22 by 22, 22, 21. Absol absolutely. Um, so more strings, fiddler, well, fiddly strings, softer strings, tinier holes. So it, it needs a lot yeah, more love. Denser string pattern. Denser string pattern, absolutely. So do you play yourself at badminton? Do you play? I play a little bit. Would you I'm mind if I ask what level you play at? <laughs> in america we have like a being like the top level b c mm. d level okay i'm probably at e level e oh no <laughs> <laughs> well if i do ever get to japan um hopefully we'll be able to go hit some shows because because For i show. think yeah. yeah i'm 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 looking forward to that and japan is definitely a country i'd like to visit big time so i'm gonna hit you up Okay, so let's let, let's go back to talking about these huge tournaments. Um, so stringing at these events, so you've met lots of uh, top end pro players on the circuit, you know, such as Lee Chong Wei, Tao Feek, Peter Gator. Did you know them really well? Did you come to know them well, or is it just you not know, really? Like the big tournaments, I'm just a stringer, so I just do work. 
you just stick your head in the machine and just try to crank out as many rackets as you can. So when you say crank out as many rackets as you can, how many are you talking about a day? And what's your typical day like, uh, time-wise? In the US, if I'm doing US Open, five o'clock in the morning. Oh, wow, five, okay. And string till about seven. In the evening. PM. Wow. And, <laughs> but the big tournaments, they're kind of a little bit more organized because there's okay. more stringers. US Open, we're maybe two or three stringers. Okay. But World Championships, uh, All Englands, Olympics, at least seven. Wow. So is that so seven for the whole, say, say, say the City World Championships or the All England? It's, it's, it's a week long event, isn't it? You tend to start on the Tuesday, World Championships, <clears throat> you tend to start on the Monday, and you go all the way to the Sunday. So is that the full team for the, for the whole week? A few guys will take off towards the end of the tournament because there's not as many, but like, you know, the beginnings are like the more strenuous days. Okay. So, so you got 12, 14 hour days. How many rackets do you get through a day? Probably about anywhere from 20 to 30. Average, I guess, probably like 25 a day. So everyone's averaging 25 a day. Oh, wow. Okay, I think the so lead stringers are probably a little bit less because they're the ones taking care of the players. Okay, so, like when I'd string with like Mark Lawrence or Tim Willis, those guys they're maybe averaging about 20 a day. So they're front so of they're house, dealing, yeah, they're, they're dealing with the players, so they kind of have to take a little bit more time with the players because the players are the ones that like the top 10 players. Mm -hmm. They want to know the stringers and they feel more comfortable with uh, people that they know, that they trust. Yes. So that was the next question I was going to, I was going to move into. So were they fussy with the rackets or, you know, like very nitpicky, specific tensions, specific players, stuff? They're, they're grateful to have their rackets back. <laughs> A lot of times, like I've seen Tofik's bag. That dude has like 20 rackets in his bag. So he, oh. so he's not, he's not fussy at all. I don't think so. He's, he's pretty happy to get his rackets back. I only one time I've seen a, a player complain. Oh, wow. And he was, uh, it was legit. So it he had was, a reason uh, to be complaining. Yeah. He's a little angry. He a guy. He's married to Sina. Oh, um, Parapali Kashap. So we're yeah, when, Kashi, when Kashi Yeah, so we're going to name, cool, <laughs> we're gonna no, name him shame now. We're going to name him shame. That guy's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. But what happened was he was playing a match 2011 World Championships. Yep. And I think in one game, three of his strings broke. So he had a legit reason to be kind of angry at the string team. Yeah, that's three points, but, isn't it? You know, yeah. It, it it could have been him mishitting, but it's kind of weird to have like three rackets in one game. Yeah, I'm gonna have yeah. to look up that video to see to see if we can find something about it. <laughs> I'm not sure if he might have brought back like four or five rackets, but he he was a little angry that like in one game he broke three strings. Especially as a as a singles player, isn't it? Like yeah. uh, singles players don't break too many strings in comparison to, to doubles players. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We might have to revisit that at some point. <laughs> 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 so here's another question. Um, I remember Lee Chong Wei being on BG sixty six sharp for ages after Yonex have discontinued it. So was it true that when he was playing up till you know twenty eleven, twenty twelve, and beyond, was he still using sixty six sharp? I was only there till 2012, mm -hmm. but yeah, he had his own reel. Oh, ooh. Right in his own reel. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. So, so he did have his own reels, even when consumer-wise, we can't, we can't buy it in retail anymore. So, so yeah, it was I've, blank. Oh, so it's got, no, it's got no coating or it's not got no, the, no the reel had The reel had nothing on it. I didn't look at the string, but oh. I'm pretty sure it was 66 sharp. Okay, so I've never used 66 Sharp before. Um, 
have you have you used it before what's the difference in comparison to other six okay I have no we idea. Might, we might have to dig deeper then. We might have to dig deeper. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so that's good. So let me roll back a few, a, a bit, um, roll back a bit of the years. How did you first start getting into stringing? I actually worked at a sandwich shop. Okay. That, and, I'm, I'm not and, stringing. <laughs> and the guys at the racket shop would come in for lunch. So I'd be making their lunch and they hang out. And then all of a sudden, the shop that I worked at, uh, Prince uh, stopped making badminton rackets. So they had, this was in 1996. Okay. So they had like 20,000 rackets in stock. And the company that I started, the the shop I started working at, Asby Mm. Sports in San Jose, California, they, they bought out all the Prince rackets. Wow. It's like 20,000 rackets. <laughs> and they needed someone to string them. Yeah. <laughs> so they asked me, they came in, they said, you want some extra cash? I said, sure. And they said, oh, we got some rackets that we need strung. You want to learn how to string? I said, sure. And then that's uh, why I started stringing. Wow. So how, so how quickly did you go on from there onto stringing at the world championships in anaheim in 2005 uh two uh 1996 is when i started stringing 1999 i i was bugging yonex to find out how to like string for them so they invited mm-hmm. me to the uh, adult nationals in 1999 so um, i did a pretty good job at the 1999 adult nationals and then they brought me in for the u.s open and then from 1999, I started stringing U.S. Opens. Wow. So wow. it's kind of lucky how I actually got started stringing for Yonex. But then I think... Knowing somebody. But the key thing is you were asking them, you were bugging them, right? So you yeah, took the, in, to the initiative them. and go for it. Yeah. So you got to go for it. Moral of the story, you got to go for it. But it's kind of knowing somebody. So... The shop that I worked at had a good rapport with Yonex USA. So I had good people to kind of put in good words for me. But nowadays, I think, like for tennis, they, they want to have a little bit more international flavor. Mm-hmm. So like at Australian Open, they have so many stringers from different countries. Diversity. Yeah. Yeah. And then and I think that's... Helps it helps with the with the players rapport like you have guys from True. japan the united states uh, spain like that players coming in from those countries they feel more comfortable with those kinds of guys knowing that people from their country are stringing and they can actually like talk to the stringers yeah and i guess it's also a very good way to upskill everyone quite quickly as well isn't it because everyone comes into one place um upskill or updates their techniques or learn new techniques and then they go back to each countries yeah Yeah. so i think that's good it's a little bit different how so it's kind of like a core stringer group and Mm. especially like badminton stringing people don't like to do it (laughs) because of the fiddly long hours high rackets low stringer numbers yeah (laughs) wow i love it and there's a guy from Canada. Do you know Koyo? No. Koyo I, no. I, I don't that know. That guy's a freak. He loves stringing. <laughs> Can we look him up on YouTube? Can we find him? Uh, yeah, actually, he has a few videos. Uh, he's on Facebook. Okay. Instagram. But yeah, okay. that, that guy's really, really cool. He actually flew from Canada. I don't know if he intentionally wanted to visit me, but... <laughs> The dude came from Canada to visit my shop. That's crazy. Passionate. We we call that passion yeah. and love, right? So yeah. he's passionate about De- stringing. That guy is definitely passionate. But all the Canadians know him and love him. He must be doing a good job then. Otherwise, he you is know. like. I see so many of his pictures. Like he's busy to the core. That guy's. <laughs> wow. He loves stringing though. Well, I think that's that's um, core 
essentials to have, isn't it? You, you, you need to love what you do. You need to be passionate, passionate about, you need to be quite passionate about what you do. And then you need to love, continue learning, upgrading, stringing, and then keep developing this, this thing. And people will then build rapport with you. And then you get onto a stage where people just trust you with their rackets and trust you with their Definitely. kit. Definitely, yeah. What kind of houses or what kind of places do Yonex put you guys in? So when you go and string at these events, so for example, on the list, you have um, 2005 World Championships in, in, in Anaheim, 2010 World Juniors in Guadalajara, uh, Guadalajara, and then you got the 2011 Pan, Amer- Pan Am Games, Pan American Games, and you got 2011 World Champs in London, World Championships, 2012 All England, and as well as 2012 London Olympics and more. So where do... Where do Yonex put you guys up to? Like posh five star hotels? They try to economize as much as possible um, for US Open, at least. Y- Yonex USA, they're they're on a budget. So usually I would room with my cousin and we'd string. And the hotel is actually walking distance. Everyone's on a budget. You, you need to maximize it. <laughs> so we're going to call it Airbnb style. Airbnb. <laughs> yeah, actually, they have like a refrigerator, like a full size refrigerator freezer, and like you can actually cook in the in the hotel. Like they have wow. all Englands and uh, World Championships. Yonex Japan. They're pretty good <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> they saw <sort> you uh, out <laughs> uh for all england we pretty much stayed with uh where the players stayed jury in oh well in birmingham yes jury's in yeah, yeah. so that's a hotel and, uh i they gave me my own room nice because <laughs> i was the only no there's a the yonex uh, rep from USA. He was there. So it's only two guys from the US. Okay. But he had his own room. I had my own room. So he could relax. No, no complaints England, there. Uh, sorry. World Championships, I had my own room. Wow. So because the tournament starts on Mondays and Tuesdays, when would you fly in? When would you get into the country? Um, I think we were there like when they're setting up. So maybe we flew on Saturdays. Okay. Get a little acclimated. Sundays we help set up, and then Mondays players are there. Start stringing. Did you have to bring your own equipment as well? No, Yonex supplied the machines. I okay. would usually bring my own tools though. Tools. Okay, so tools, but then they will set they will set up the machines, and and you'll just go and finalize the setup to suit your studio yeah, style yeah yeah well we have help set up machines so well that's good yeah because i do remember meeting uh mark lawrence or mark lever and tim willis uh, on, on a few occasions um typically at the all englands um i remember seeing them at the 2011 world championships as well um i think that's how we got well we briefly chatted and then now, <laughs> nine years later, <laughs> when we first met, and then and then now. Um, so this wraps up part one of this video. There'll be a second part coming. If you have any questions for Alan, please drop them down in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing so you'll be notified when the next video is posted. Please also remember the Air Shuttle giveaway ends on the 5th of July. So please make sure you go over to those videos, which I link up here, to comment on them to stand a chance to win the Air Shuttle. The winners will be announced very soon. All right, see you guys next time.